Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stefan Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. Okay, so before we get into this one, I just want to put right at the top that we're going to spoil the heck out of this movie, Mm -hmm. which is called Fresh, and it's on Hulu now. It came out uh, in March, early March. So... There, and I'm going to give a content warning, but the content warning is a spoiler. Oh, so. yeah. Because, yeah, I had no idea about this movie. Mm. I yeah. saw a few people TikTok about it and tweet about it, and I was like, okay, whatever. Really no intentions in watching this movie, Annie. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And then you were like, <laughs> we mu- you must watch this movie. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I'm a good friend that way. I have, I've like really realized my love language is sharing entertainment that I love with people. That is that is my thing. Yes. But uh, as we mentioned in Turning Red, we are doing two movies this month and I think next month as well. So here's hoping that you like these kind of deep dives, feminist deep dives into movies as much as we like them. This is again, Annie's love language. So she's telling you how much she loves you. It is true. It is true. true. I get so excited about this stuff. (laughs) And uh, yes, so all of that to say, the content warning uh, is we are going to discuss some instances of sexual assault, violence, and just general gruesomeness. Grossness. Yeah. I also want to (laughs) say we've got a lot of things that sort of delayed this episode um, some were like work related. Yes. Uh, some are allergy or illness yeah, related. Yeah, my bad. I do have some weird like stuffiness from drainage. It's not COVID. Mm-hmm. I did check. However, it is some grossness. And so my voice is extra stuffy. So for those who hate my voice, you're really going to hate my voice today. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> well, I have heard of some people who like that sound, so, oh, you know. Okay, then there you go. For those people, welcome. <laughs> it's a whole episode of Friends. Um, and also, because of these delays, uh, this episode, which was supposed to be a Feminist Movie Friday, might be coming out on a Monday, which means our Monday Mini might be coming out on a Friday just to really mess with you. Yes, we love the switcheroo. It's our April mm-hmm. Fool's. Except delayed. Very late. Much like everything else in our lives. Yes. And also, this is coming out on Easter Monday in that case, which is sort of funny. Well, I did make the joke about, yes, eating the body of Christ. You did. You certainly uh, did. (laughs) My bad. It was a practice that I had in our religion, in my Christian religion. And I was like, yes, this is absolutely all about the sacrament. So, you know... Irony? Mm-hmm. Is that what this is? It's maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't maybe it not. ironic, don't you think? <laughs> so, also on top of all of this, I really wanted to see this because I had heard like buzz about it. I'd seen the trailer a million times. It has Sebastian Stan in it. So I was curious. Uh, and I watched it, the I think, the day after it came out. Uh, Because I was going to stay up really late and watch it, and then I was responsible, and I went to bed early. Good on you. Um, Yeah. But I had a friend who was coming to hang out with me in Atlanta, and she lives. She doesn't live in Atlanta because she had a a date for someone she'd met online. And um, she was going to come hang out with me after. And I watched this movie as she was, like, preparing to go on this date, and I sent her a frantic text where I didn't really provide context and just said, like, I've just seen this movie and and, and online dating and cannibals and you need to watch out. And she was like, what are you talking about? And I got the, we're doing this for the show. You really need to watch it. I can't wait for you to watch it. We're going to watch it together. And we did. Yes, we did. We did. And I'm sure you'll talk about your opinion on that later. Um, Traumatized. But then I made my friend after her date was over, which did not involve any of the things that I frantically (laughs) texted her about, thank goodness, we watched it together. And she, as someone who is online dating, was like, yes, this. And I was like, yes. That's why we had to talk about it. Because we had just done, at the time, our episodes on bad 
dating and bad dates. Um, and I, I mean, within the first five minutes, I was like, oh, yeah, uh-huh. This is it. Well, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know we're going to talk about it a bit, but like there is a point when she's like, this is the nightmare. No, this is not happening. And it is like, yeah, everything about this is the nightmare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So if you want to see our episodes about uh, modern dating, we've done a lot of them. We did one for like COVID, yeah. uh, dating during the pandemic. We, we did those two on the bad dates. We've done like online dating in general. We've done a lot yeah. around this topic. I mean, at this point in our age, uh, uh, hitting 40, we have seen a real big evolution of dating and what that looks like today. I mean, a huge yes. transition. And we're, we talk about it with Sex in the City and how significantly it's changed even since then. Like, yeah, so it's mm -hmm. inevitable that we would be talking about this. But yeah, this movie is pinpoints every nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does. And it has, you know, I love some good symbolism and metaphor. So you sure do. It's got a lot of that going on. And it also has a, a conversation about the difference between online dating and uh, more traditional uh, dating, uh, which we're going to talk about as well. But yeah, definitely see our episodes on bad dates because this is, whoo, it's one for the ages. <laughs> this is it. This is it. This is it. Okay, so let's talk about the plot. Fresh is a 2022 dark comedy about online dating, dating in general, meet cutes. Ha -ha! <laughs> Very funny. Um, yeah. Really bad dates, like really bad dates. Um, and friendships between women. It was directed by Mimi Cave and Lauren Kahn did the screenplay. It stars Daisy Edgar Jones as Noah, Sebastian Stan as Steve, Jonica T. Gibbs as Molly, and Andrea Bong as Penny. Um, since it came out, it has generally received positive reviews and it stirred up a lot of conversation about modern dating. A lot of think pieces you can find, which I did and I enjoyed. Uh, but people, <laughs> it got people talking. It got people talking. <laughs> sure did. It sure did. Here we are as part of the people who are talking about it. Um, the movie follows Noah, a young woman who is just exhausted and done with online dating, but she keeps trying. Uh, it opens with her on this terribly awkward and outright deplorable date with a man named Chad. Oh, Chad. Uh-huh. You should know. Oh, Chad. Immediately. Oh, immediately. Uh, who tells her that women of their parents' generation cared more about their appearance Wow. Um, that modern women wear baggy clothes like security blankets. Uh, that Noah would look good in a dress. Uh, he's really rude to the waiter. He takes her leftovers uh, from her to give to his brother. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Without really asking, he just kind of takes them. He does. Outside the restaurant, uh, Chad goes to kiss Noah and she stops him, telling him she doesn't think that they're a match. And he tells her that he was just being polite and good luck right. finding a man, bitch. <laughs> Which, by the way, I've seen happen so often. Yes, me too. This is what we're talking about when we say like <laughs> letting someone down gently <laughs> and then they get mad. But then if you actually let them down and say no, then they get mad. <laughs> and they're like, I didn't want you anyway. So this was a pity date. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for real. Oh, that, <laughs> within five minutes, you're infuriated by this yes. whole thing. Uh, so then you see Noah walking to her car. She has her keys in hand because she thinks she's being followed, only to realize it was a false alarm. So there's that kind of like already hanging over. Those things that we've talked about to be a woman just existing. Uh, the next day, she events to her friend Molly, who is by about the date and dating in general during a self-defense class composed of all women and taught by a man, which I also thought was interesting because we talked about that in our kind of who's making money in these self-defense classes and in the self-defense world. We are in tune. We are, we are so connected <laughs> with the kids. <laughs> the kids. <laughs> when you use that phrase, it automatically <laughs> means you're connected indeed. Um, <laughs> Molly tells Noah that she doesn't need a man or anybody for that matter, that it's just Disney movies that messed with our heads, our collective heads. And she says, F Ariel gave up the whole damn sea for a man, which I love, uh, meaning Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Just something else we've talked about. Throughout the movie, which I know you loved, Samantha, there are these scenes of eating, very close-up scenes of people biting into burgers and stuff like that. Um, so... 
Cut to, we see Noah eating carrots while scrolling through a dating app. She messages someone on there who has a picture of a dog as their profile picture. And she says, you know, a cute dog, what's his name? And she gets some lewd messages and a dick pic in response immediately, which again, I think a lot of us can relate. (laughs) Um, So frustrated, she decides to go to the grocery store for more food. And there she meets Steve, who flirts with her, charms her, gets her number. Noah later admits she didn't think people met IRL anymore, which is, yeah, we're going to come back to that point. Uh, They meet up at a bar where Noah recognizes the bartender, Paul, as someone Molly had once dated. They go through the awkward first date questions while getting more and more drunk. Noah reveals she doesn't really have any family left, and Steve tells her he is a plastic surgeon. Uh, Noah eventually admits she hates dating. She hates the preamble. She hates the awkward questions that it all feels fake. She just wants something to be real. Um, However, as they're about to part ways at the end of the night, she says, f*** it, and starts making out with him. She takes him back to her apartment where they have sex. So before we go on in the plot, I do have to ask, have you ever been hit Mm -hmm. on in the grocery store? Yes. During COVID, in fact. (laughs) Okay, so I had a friend. Yes, as in fact, she gets hit on the in the grocery store all the time. I've never mm-hmm. had that happen. Man, should I be offended or no. happy? Anyway, I just had that moment because, yeah, for one specific person, and she's amazing, she gets hit on a lot in grocery stores. She went on two different dates. I used to get hit on, um, there were two places where I, I would joke, like, I can't go there because I will just get hit on. One was, there was a Starbucks on um, Sydney Marcus. That, that like, Starbucks across from uh, all the Target and stuff. Can't go in there. Uh, I don't know, it's some <laughs> curse. <laughs> I've gotten, like, so many, so many, uh, what is that called? Prospects? Conquests? People have come up to me very, uh, very certain that I would love to go on a date with them there. And then a place at her old office, if I would just stand there, I swear to you, someone would come out and ask me out. And I'd be like, what is this? What is this vortex? <laughs> I get the, yeah, I get uh, like approaches every now and again, but yeah, it wasn't in the grocery store. I just thought it was interesting because apparently there's also, all, there was a whole tactic that men used to hit on women oh. in grocery stores. I digress. So we'll go back okay. to the plot. So, yes. Coming back the next day, Noah gives Molly the details because we all do that. But when mm-hmm. Molly goes to cyberstalk him online, and yes, I am that friend that does that, and can mm-hmm. find nothing, she tells Noah that is a red flag. Noah ignores her, and she goes on another date with Steve that involves some awkward but enjoyable dancing at Noah's apartment. White people dancing. Awkward. I just <laughs> I want to put that in there as a non-white person. It was awkward. Um, mm-hmm. When Noah tells Molly that Steve invited her to go to a surprise location... I feel like this is the love bombing part. Molly calls red flags again. Molly's so smart. But Noah is excited by the prospect. She sends Molly a blurry picture of Steve and promises to keep her posted on her location and how it's going. She does it while and he's asleep, too. Yeah. That's kind of creepy on her part, I will say. It is. It's necessary, but still creepy. Mm-hmm. When Steve arrives to pick up Noah, uh, he tells her that traffic is terrible, so they'll need to stay at his place overnight, and they can leave for their weekend getaway in the morning. Red flag! Yeah. <laughs> Noah tries to text Molly on the way, but there's no service. Red flag! They <laughs> arrive at Steve's house, this huge, lavish complex. He makes her a drink, and it quickly becomes apparent it was drugged. By the way... This is a side note. I've already told Annie this, but this is how I got introduced to Sebastian Stan's character in Once Upon a Time. Yeah. BT dubs. I can't wait to do our little exchange. Yes. You're going to watch that? Oh, yes. I'm excited. But I was like, mm-hmm. this is familiar. Oh. Anyway, so she passes <laughs> out and the opening credit starts 30 minutes in. Yeah, I was like, what is, what? What is happening? Mm-hmm. I think this is a whole new thing, though, right? So until this point, if you knew nothing about it, you might think it was a rom-com, but then things really take a turn. And that's kind of the review that I saw. Yeah, and that was one of the things I really struggled with because I I knew... (laughs) Yeah, well, I think it's very interesting. And I think most people would go in like, you know what it's about. But there is a chance, like if you miss everything, 
you could go in and not know it. Miss it. And that's my thing is like I I would love that surprise, but also like I just know the importance of like trigger and content warnings. And so I was very torn about like because I had another friend who knew nothing about it, and I really debated. And eventually, I told her like. You, it's not what you think. And if you want me to explain that more, it's going to, I said, it's going to be fine. Right. It's not what you think. But if, if you want me to explain that more, then I will. Because I just yeah. like, it could be very well, <laughs> Drugging triggering. a victim during a date, that's mm-hmm. a huge trigger. Uh, that's a mm-hmm. huge trigger for many a women. Many because uh, people still won't believe people who say I've been drugged or this has happened. And so yeah. because we know that that's a big thing that has happened, and yes, it's been kind of dramatized for specific purposes, and I hate that anyway, and then sometimes it becomes a joke, and that's unnecessary, but yeah, that in itself, had I not been warned, and had I watched this, I would have been mad. I would have been pissed off, like ready to fight somebody. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to say that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, even like the art on Hulu for this movie, like I think you would know Mm -hmm. This is not, and the description is pretty clear. Like, mm, I know I have a different theory about what they were trying to trick you with, but I will get to that later. But yeah, and it's unfortunate because I feel like of my group of women friends, at least half of us has have been drugged in a date situation or even just like out. So that's like really upsetting to know, right? Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of upsetting, uh, Noah wakes up to find herself chained to the floor in a subterranean room. Steve tells her that he was going to sell her meat and her hair, uh, that there's a lot of money in it, uh, that he has no plans to kill her immediately, that the meat is better fresh, uh, that if she behaves, he won't hurt her. Uh, He also tells her that he won't rape her, that he likes her. Uh, Noah at first thinks it's a joke um, and then tries to beg him to let her go, attacks him, but Steve physically overpowers her very easily um, and leaves her alone in the room, telling her to enjoy the sunset painted on the wall and that she'll appreciate his cooking because he is a good cook. Noah convinces Steve to let uh, let her out to take a shower uh, and uses the opportunity to try to escape, but she is quickly thwarted and Steve cuts off her ass as punishment. Um... Noah also learns that there are two other women confined with her, Penny and Melissa. While Melissa has, quote, lost her mind, Penny is kind to her, telling Noah that it isn't her fault, um, though she is shocked that Steve slept with her. Doesn't blame her, but is surprised. On top of that, Noah finds a message while flipping through a magazine from another woman that says, if you're reading this, it means he likes you, use it. And also, I just had to throw in here because, poof, one of the tips the magazine had to attract a man was just smile. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yep. So Molly grows increasingly suspicious with a text, thank God, she's receiving from uh, Noah's phone. With a little sleuthing, she discovers that not only does it seem Noah is not the one texting her, but that Steve is married and has children. Once again, I do this. To the point that a friend of our show, Caroline, will be like, if you need to find out anything about any of your exes or your boyfriends, ask Samantha. It's true. <laughs> I will look. Good to know. I, have, I was a defense <laughs> investigator for a reason. Just mm-hmm. saying. I know mm-hmm. what's going on here. Uh, She goes to visit Paul, the bartender from earlier, who actually had watched the two dates, so he kind of knew already who he Mm -hmm. was, and shares her location with him as she goes to investigate the second family. So, again, all these things are what we do on Mm -hmm. dates. I did all those things. Again, we talked Mm -hmm. about in one of my dates having my actual roommate follow me to the restaurant. Yeah. Molly tells the woman of the family, Anne, of her suspicions, who is the wife, and Anne denies them very, like, obviously shady, trying to be, she's a little bit nervous, uh, mm-hmm. trying to get her out. And as they're talking, Steve Brendan arrives and dismisses her concerns, too. Uh, yeah, again, though, Anne is very oddly, like, nervous. Mm-hmm. As they're walking Molly to the door, Molly 
being smart but not too smart because she shouldn't have done this while she was there, calls Noah's phone and it goes off from inside Steve's pocket. Realizing she was right, Molly doesn't have time to react before Anne, twist, knocks her out mm-hmm. from behind. Yes. So the Steve slash Brendan thing is uh, he, his name is Brendan online. Right. But, uh, Noah's been calling him Steve. Okay, so soon after this, Steve invites Noah to dinner after she had asked what human meat tastes like. He makes her noodles with a human meatball uh, composed of a woman named Hope. Noah eats it, and Steve feels a connection to her. Um, and yes, by the way, there this is after a very lengthy scene where Steve exuberantly dances as he cuts up some human meat. You see like his little meat closet. Um, he packages it along with some of the women's belongings. He says that he only harvests women because that's where the market is and that they, quote, taste better. So he puts these items in with the women's meat. Uh, oh, God, it sounds so disturbing to say. Uh, to send to his rich all-male clientele uh, because it makes him feel closer to the women. So after this dinner is done, Steve removes... Molly's breast, unbeknownst to Noah. Uh, Because yes, he captured Molly and now she's in this situation as well. Steve asks Noah to another dinner, gifting her with a pink dress and makeup to spruce herself up. Um, Noah does so, practicing smiling in the mirror. They have a candlelit dinner and Steve reveals that some of who they're eating is Melissa, uh, who had been in the same situation and she had heard earlier. Uh, They both proceed to get drunk and eat some breast meat to finish out the meal. When Steve shows Noah his hidden wall of items he's taken from the victims, Noah sees Molly's phone case. Steve and Noah awkwardly dance once again, and Steve realizes he forgot to handcuff her. Noah convinces him that they should have sex and pretends she's going to give him a blowjob, but bites off his testicles instead. Um, she flees, managing to free Molly and Penny, and they fend off an infuriated Steve with cooking utensils, bludgeoning and stabbing him. Uh, the women make it outside, but Steve follows them with a gun, shouting after them and calling them bitches and liars, which I find very funny. Um, they are able to get the gun from him and shoot him in the head. Yeah, I would like to say throughout this movie, because I am this person, I'm screaming, saying, hit him again. Y'all didn't kill him. Hit him again. What are you doing? Hit him again. Mm-hmm. I believe in overkill in this situation. <laughs> I am not a violent person. I'm just saying overkill in this situation. And, and that it is to point that, yes, she is definitely uh, playing up, which is what we have been told, by the way, when if, if we're ever captured or kidnapped, to not fight because it's worse to fight. Mm-hmm. I think that's changed as of late because some self-supposed people like just do what you can because if you do this, it's going to get you killed. But a lot of people mm-hmm. have told, you know, if you maybe whatever, make yourself human to them, yeah. they won't. So many bad things. But Oof. all that to say, she does vomit after the first time she eats human yeah. meat, which she made does. me feel a little better because I was like, what is happening? Well, see, that's what I thought the trick was going to be. Was yeah, that, that she oh, enjoys she it. she tasted it and she yeah. enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, we needed that vomit scene. We need it. <laughs> uh, simultaneously, Paul, remember Paul, the bartender, has actually followed Molly's GPS pin uh, after not hearing from her and arrives at the location. But at the sound of a gunshot, wisely turns around. This is one of those moments like, yep, like I wish you would have stayed, but that was smart. Get the hell out. Yeah, definitely. Get the hell out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't do this to yourself. Um, mm-hmm. And I'll, honestly, I didn't expect for him to find them or at least get caught up in that because he does walk up to the space trying to find yeah. out what's going on. Mm-hmm. But yeah, here's, here's the screaming gunshot runs. And yeah. also, uh, Steve's wife, Anne, arrives and sees blood and signs of struggle in that kitchen, realizing that Steve was planning on cheating on her with Noah because she has all the signs. And this is where Annie and I debated about what's going on with Anne. What about yeah. Anne? Uh, she also mm-hmm. has a courier who has been throughout. He's the one that's delivering the packages. So he's a bodyguard, some part of this too. But she, mm-hmm. he's pretty much uh, doing what she asks, kind of like a butler mm-hmm. as a part of this as well. Earlier, we found out half of, Anne, uh, half of Anne's leg was missing. Again, Annie and I mm-hmm. had a conversation about why. So 
meaning she probably was a victim of his at one point in time. Um, And Noah goes back, back to Noah. She goes back towards the house to recover her phone when she runs into Anne, who tricks her into thinking she's relieved that Steve is dead before attempting to strangle Noah. By the way, Noah does not know who Anne is at this point. She just has like, where'd you come from? (laughs) Yeah. Um, And Molly shows up and bashes Anne's head in with the shovel, shouting that bitches like her are the problem. So many things to that. She Mm -hmm. is not wrong. (laughs) <laughs> um, Noah and Molly lean against each other, telling each other how much they love each other. And Noah gets a text from Chad, the bad date from the beginning, reading, You up? The end. Uh, and BT <laughs> dubs. BT dubs. This is kind yeah. of the big trigger where Molly knows something wrong because when uh, Molly tries to text Noah, they always end with a love you, and that didn't yeah. happen. Yeah, so that's signals, how she was people. like, I don't signals. think she's texting me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's so many things to talk about with that. And I, I we're going to get into it for sure. But it, like you said, Samantha, so many of these things throughout, even though this was a very, like, obviously elevated, horrible <laughs> situation, we can recognize these, like, similar themes and safety measures that we as women have put into place to protect ourselves when it comes to online dating. And that is one where, oh, is cyber stalking. We talked about that too with like, yep. unfortunately, somebody could like take your phone and be texting as you and and having those sort of, because Molly even has that scene where she's like, no one's going to believe me if I say someone's texting me from her number, but I don't think it's her. Right. Because they're, you know, that close and they do have that sort of ritual. Just, yeah, so much of that. I was watching it like, you're right. This is a, this is like a show. You're right. This is a horror movie like that we're putting in the, into place these things, anticipating someone could do us harm in a situation that should be fun or at least like not terrifying. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yes, obviously, one of the big themes in this is. Dating and online dating. And as I said, yeah, I, I immediately texted my friend who's dating online and was like, oh my God, <laughs> you got to tell me everything where you are. Like, I need to know all the details. Like, <laughs> dating is scary, Which, man. It, yeah, I mean, and even that, like, even I think unfortunately it's necessary, but even having your friend tell you that is like, it's, it's just like a cloud hanging over what should be a fun time what should be a fun time Mm -hmm. and i do think so as i said there are a lot of articles that were written about this and a lot of think pieces um and a lot of it was about how modern dating is all about commodification and consumption of women's bodies um so if you go back to our bad dating episodes i know a lot of us can relate to her date with chad um, and yes, that was certainly a purposeful name choice, I have to believe, due to oh, the yeah. incel connection. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that whole like lecture on femininity to her, the monologue about hot sauce that he does. Oh, my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can relate, right? Yes. Um, that hateful reaction to rejection. Um, and though he lamented the loss of women... Uh, of their parents' generation, he does not hold the door for her. Like, it kind of slams in her face. Uh, (laughs) Even though I guess that's the chivalry that he would want. Uh, He insists he splits the check, which is great, but he's just not being consistent. He's like, I want the pieces that benefit me only. Uh, Meaning, you look this way, but you pay now, and I'm not going to hold the door for you. (laughs) And then, yeah, like the nervous walking to the car in the dark, the dick pic. Uh, And then when you get to Steve, he at first seems very charming, which by the way, Sebastian Stan talked to an expert on Ted Bundy for this role. In my head, again, when I saw his first role of being the creepy dude, he did fine. I don't think he really needed to talk to anyone. I think he's just one of those actors, and I'm saying this with no judgment either way, but I think he's just one of those actors that's like, I'm going to do the research. I'm going to... Right. Let's just find you do the research. Don't do method acting. Can we no. go away from the method acting from all of these disgusting things? But at the same time, I'm like, you you seemed creepy. <laughs> like, you, you also seem fun, but you also can be creepy. You do fine with that. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, and it's 
funny, but he kind of sort of reminded me of our boss. And I texted you about that. And I was like, I'm very yeah, unsettled right now. I'm very unsettled. <laughs> you said that on mic. <laughs> I don't care. It's true. (laughs) Sebastian Stan is a fine-looking fellow. He looks like Mark Hamill. You know I love that. You do, except (sighs) you kept screaming, he can't be Luke, after watching this movie. (laughs) I did. I do feel that way. (laughs) (laughs) I can, my mind changes. You know, it's it's like a, a ripples on water. Who knows what I'll think tomorrow, even. Then there were also themes... Again, I watched this with my friend who's doing a lot of like online dating. Uh, afterwards, we had a really good talk about this, and she was telling me how much this resonated with her of like the the fear of the drug drinks or just knowing she could easily be physically overpowered. Or yeah, we've talked. To, I hate this is one of my pet peeves, like being told to smile. Um, which he does to her after he's told her he's going to like slowly sell off her meat. He's like, just smile more. Be Um, fine. Yeah. um, Being told to dress up and put on makeup to look a certain way, uh, to not cause problems and be a good girl. He even tells her to stop being dramatic about the fact he's imprisoning her and planning on slowly killing her. Yes. Which I felt like was sort of the serial killer equivalent of you're being emotional. Like, right. you're being hysterical right now. <laughs> Calm down. Yeah. Jeez. But that was one thing I saw that I didn't really pick up on the first time I watched it, but when I would, which, by the way, I've watched it like 10 times. Um, she really loves this movie, which is concerning. I do. I know. I just, I love, like, picking up on symbolism and things. I, I don't know. I didn't pick up on... Uh, some people made, like, the, the uh, connection between oh, you know, you don't meet people in real life anymore, and and she does, and sort of the comparison between that and online dating and uh, with the conversation of Chad of being like, oh, it was so much better when our parents' generation and they met in real life, and that's just the better way to do it, and sort of having a critique of like, you know, maybe, but... (laughs) Can still go wrong. It can still <laughs> it be does. bad. And it does. Oh, it went terribly wrong. Okay, so yes, another theme throughout is definitely consumption. Because as we mentioned yeah, earlier, oh my God. <laughs> throughout the movie, you see imagery of eating, of mindless snacking, um, something that is reminiscent of the mindless scrolling that can happen on dating apps. Um and my friend also said that. She was like, oh, yeah, that kind of reminds me of just like this constant it is. need to just scroll. And we've talked about that before. We've talked about, well, I think we did gamification of dating. Um, and that's what she calls it. She says it's sort of, for her, kind of like a game, just sort of almost like you're playing Candy Crush or something. Well, it's kind of the, the beginning of what that dating sites were was hot or not. And mm-hmm. that was Tinder. And it's just essentially saying, judging people. And it was a fun little game, which translated to, let's judge, swipe right, swipe left. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll meet up. So it became, yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's how it started. Yeah. And and that's a good callback to, to Hot or Not, because a part of this is we're kind of looking at people as sort of like fresh meat. Like we're reducing them to hot or not, right. um, which is very dehumanizing a lot of times. it's And it's sort of like scrolling for food delivery options. Like, do I want this? Do I want this? No, 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 no. Um, when Noah first meets Steve, it's in a grocery store uh, with a sign reading fresh meats mm-hmm. hanging over her head. And it's over food that they first bond. And yes, if you didn't know, the tagline of this movie is meat cute with meat, M-E-A-T. So yeah, just yes. like that theme of Blasphemous. <laughs> I still can't believe I didn't know what a meat cute was. <laughs> I know. Could you imagine what would have happened with this movie? You would have been like, what? <laughs> and not understanding. You're welcome. You, you really helped me out, Samantha. <laughs> yeah. So here's a quote from Joshua Rivera at Polygon. 
You know that algorithm is likely to let you down, so you just hope it won't lead you to a certain death. It's a boring, horrible way to think about people, at odds with the fundamental desire at the heart of dating, to be seen as a complete person by someone interested in you, and you in them. What's more likely is objectification. Dating apps encourage users to reduce each other down to parts. To meet. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing. I Yes, there is. To, of course, like there's the, do they appeal to me first and foremost? But for most, maybe I'm, I'm being too generalizing, but for me, when I was on dating sites, sure, you're pleasing to me. Let me go and look and see what you have. Oh, you have these things? Hell no. Nah. Like for, mm-hmm. like, there's so many other things that some people do just do the looks, for sure. Mm-hmm. I feel like for a lot of women, maybe again, it's under my impression, I cannot base it on that. There's too many red mm-hmm. flags. I think you're right. And that comes from somebody who I like, I've observed and I've talked to my friends about it. And I would love for listeners to write in your experiences. But I think that in very broad, general terms, women do unfortunately have to be much more like, I'm looking for these red flags. Whereas men kind of have the, the safety, the security to just be like, oh, I like this. She looks good. Okay, yes. And I'm not saying like, certainly, I'm not saying there's no aspect for men of like, I don't want her to be absolutely horrendous. Right. I just think there is a difference of like safety involved. And finding those red flags and why that's significant Mm -hmm. and who's willing to ignore what. Again, generalizations when it comes to this, because I do feel like there's, I definitely have a lot of guy friends who are like, this is what she likes. Hell no. That will say that too. But it's Mm -hmm. still different standards of like, he doesn't agree with you. I don't agree with you. As for women, it's like, this might get me killed. This is a huge red flag where he's going to be toxic because he's going to be abusive to me. Mm -hmm. Just say, difference. Yeah. It's it's very interesting and upsetting to hear my friends. I know we've talked about this before, but to hear their red flags. and, And I mean, it all makes sense, but it's like, wow, yeah, you can't just... (laughs) <laughs> right. You have to kind of read into these things and through, unfortunately, a lot of terrible experiences um, have learned like, oh, I associate this with like not a safe person, not a right. safe guy. Right. Which is just different. Um, a different experience. And yeah, I like this quote because it talks about like, ultimately it should be, you know, not reducing people. Dating shouldn't be reducing people down to this. But that's what it's become. And now there's like the threat of violence and death involved right. for people. Has it like, it's not just that it's now become that. It's been like mm-hmm. that uh, for years, yeah. but there's less mode of apps and ways of getting this information. Uh, mm-hmm. And of course, way back when, when it was decided by the parents, that was a whole different mm-hmm. conversation. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, no. Yeah. But uh-huh. going on with these quotes, now that I've made mm-hmm. this example, from Benjamin <laughs> Lee at The Guardian, he says, For many of us, and especially for women, dating apps and dating culture can be violently revealing, exposing people's worst impulses and most selfish desires. And the film takes particular issue with how women's bodies are judged, shared, and abused. And oh my God, right on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, when he's making those boxes with their meat in there and then like their personal belongings. Oh, that is so, that's exactly that. Like, yeah, just judged. Here it is for your consumption. Doesn't matter what happened to her. And like, you're never really going to think about that person again. I think it's also really symbolic that Steve takes Noah's ass and Molly's breast first. I mean, it makes sense (laughs) in terms of like, where are you going to go first? But also, I think it's symbolic because it's the physical, sexualized parts of the the feminine body. Obviously. That, yeah, that we reduce women down to in our culture all too often. On top of that is the whole women taste better thing that he says. And that women are who Steve hunts for his all-male clientele, um, most of whom are older white men, sending the cuts of meat, yeah, with things like bras and underwear. Like, it's personal items, he's sending. Um, And there is a long history 
of showing domination by eating or consuming someone in some way, not necessarily their like actual meat, um, whether it's making a cookie with their likeness on it or a food item baked in the shape of one of the body parts. <laughs> this whole thing is odd to talk about. I think we can all admit this is a strange conversation we're having. When Steve explains it to Noah, he says, they become a part of you. So it feels like a really just like misogynistic domination. Oh, yeah. I I have complete power over you. Right. Now you're part of me at my whims. Right. <sighs> Another thing I wanted to talk about that really resonated with me watching this is this idea of playing the game when it comes to dating, when it comes to keeping yourself safe as a woman on these dates. Because I think one of the most disturbing things for me in this movie is that you see a really elevated version of a woman having to play into the patriarchal game of survival, of having to hurt, eat other women to survive. With Noah's character at one point, you aren't sure, as we said, whose side she's like, maybe she got a taste of it uh, and is like all in on it now. And then on the other side, you have Anne, who clearly doesn't have an issue throwing other women under the bus. And my my theory with Anne is that she kind of was able to play the game, got out, and then did not care about the other women that were getting hurt. On top of that, there is the idea of this balancing act so many women face when it comes to dating. Always, always managing the man's ego and his wants. You know, you smile, you wear the dress, you do your makeup, just so. Just like he likes it. Right. You make him laugh. You get him to talk about himself. You make him feel special just so he doesn't hurt you. So he isn't angry. So she kind of does that with the like, tell me about how you got into eating people. Like, right. Just, uh, I feel like a lot of us can relate to that too. Right. I think with going back to the Anne's character, I did find it because we, after the attack on Molly, he said, We were a good team. You did a good job. And you could tell, even mm-hmm. though she hated it, she also needed it. And it was, mm-hmm. it's definitely like a Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. moment that it makes mm-hmm. you say, uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then there's that scene where Noah is putting on makeup and practicing the smile, her smile, getting ready for this performance that is so present for women on a lot of dates. Um, and I, her hands are handcuffed. I don't know if you explained this. We kind of mentioned it, but her hands are handcuffed during this whole thing when he does the dates and stuff. Like, And that just feels very symbolic to me also. Mm -hmm. Um, and she weaponizes this game and she weaponizes her femininity to beat Steve at his own game, turning the tables, even telling him to give her a smile before she shoots him. But yeah, I I feel like I felt that too of like that performance on a date of like, "Ah, I gotta act this way or else. Um, also the awkward dance scene at the end, not the first one, the one at the end, I think it's supposed to be a metaphor for the awkward preamble of dating. Some have also said it's like they're kind of looking at the camera in in reference to the fact that as a society, we're watching this all play out too and are kind of like, oh, I'll gift this or oh, I'll do this, but I'm not going to do anything to stop it. You know, I'll just kind of look at it, move on. It's a very unsettling, like they're looking at the camera and you're like, (laughs) oh. And then, yeah, I did just have to mention Steve yelling at Noah for being a liar, really. Right. Ooh, wow. The hypocrisy. (laughs) Well, it kind of reminds me of men in general when they call them liars for being teases. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, you like, literally when you're trying to flirt to get away with people, and I've done this so many times where I'm, like, smiling and giggling, but I'm trying to count the situation and make you feel secure in yourself, but at the same time trying to walk away. Yep. I've done this. Yes, definitely, because this was in in response to her. He thought she was interested. Right. She had been pretending to be interested to get out of this unsafe situation. He called her a liar. And I'm like, dude, you're literally cannibal. Right. You (laughs) are a cannibal. (laughs) And you pretended like you were in love with her and taking her Mm -hmm. on a fancy trip. You didn't even tell her your real name. Yes. How dare you? Bruh. (laughs) Bruh, indeed. But to end on an uplifting note, I did really, <laughs> really love the the kind of women as support groups. Um, yes. 
Because at the heart of the story, the hero of the story is once again friendships and support between women, whether it's Molly trying to get information to vet Steve, like looking him up online, um, then checking in on each other, Molly investigating the second family, Penny and Noah bonding in their darkest moments and assuring each other it's not their fault that this is happening, that they have to keep fighting, or on all of them coming together to fight Steve, and in part Anne, who is an example of women who betrays other women and benefits yep. off their pain. Which is what um, Molly was talking about. It's women like you! Yes. White feminists yes. like you. I don't know if that's mm-hmm. a statement, but in, in general. It kind of felt like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm a little um, too on. No, I think that's I think that was intended. But no, I just loved it. I loved it was one of those things again where unfortunately throughout I could relate. I could relate to this like checking in. Who is this guy? Like, you know, I'm happy for you, but these are some red flags. Like always checking in on each other and providing this support. Um and then at the end, I like that it ends with them. Like, I love right. you, I love you more. Um, yeah. Like, I did appreciate that at least they survived. <laughs> yeah, they did. They did. They were missing some parts, all of them, but... Plus, <laughs> 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 <Come on. laughs> Samantha said she was not happy. She was I was. I said, I will never watch this again. Bye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you for watching it with me just this once at least. And as always, listeners, we do have uh, a couple movies planned, but we love getting these suggestions from you. Yes. We've got a list, but keep sending more suggestions in our way. You can do that at our email, which is stuff at iheartmedia.com. You can find us on Twitter at momstuffpodcast or on Instagram at stuff I never told you. Thanks as always to our super producer, Christina. Uh, I know she would support us. She'd have our back. Oh. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. She would do the overkill, I bet. She would hit listen to me. <laughs> I think she would. <laughs> In the best way, Christina. <laughs> um, <laughs> and thanks to you for listening. Stuff Wonder told you production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 